I have bought this into commission. So I've got some elbows. I could easily have just used little bits of pipe and the normal elbows, but I wanted the push fit elbows just to keep it more tidy. So we've got gas coming in here, CO2 coming in here through these, uh, and then out into that solenoid. Then I've only just kind of like tacked it along there behind that pillar and into the fermentation vessel and uh, there we are we've got only needs a little bit it doesn't need a huge amount of pressure these would take an awful lot more pressure than people realize but i think two three psi's that's fine fine for me so good that works hoorah i've moved the um I've moved the plug down there as well because I think we're going to need to use that plug for the canning machine. The uh, um, uh, the uh, come on duo filler uh, will be fired off that. That's going to be up there, and these are all going to be on Wi-Fi switches. Uh, so that gives me then the opportunity to completely isolate everything up there. You won't be able to touch it with your hand. And from here, you won't be able to touch that with your hand from the hand wash basin, which I think is the, that's the criteria. Uh, good. Wow, it's Friday. I've just been thinking about this. I need to run another one along here, don't I? For the unit tank. <laughs> oh, well. Now, if I've got two of these fermenters crashing at the same time I can just put a two in a one you know a splitter because this isn't providing any great amount of pressure it's merely keeping that blanket of co2 on top so that and come up boom 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 yeah I see ideally I could have another regulator up there because I'll have these two that for the uh, CO2 blankets, that going to the unit tank, one of these each for these, but I will have up here a. I've got another one of those 60 litre keg menters, but it's got a cooling coil in it, so I'll be using that for small batches, sort of like half the size of this, really. Oh, and this will be sitting under here. Planning, planning, planning. That's not good. We don't want that. Fortunately, there should be an easy way of bringing her back in. I'm going to need to get a rope on there. All right, back soon. Welcome back, everybody. This super strength export lager, as it turned out, my efficiency is brilliant on this kit. I tell you, it turned out a lot stronger than I forecast, which is why it's a good job I didn't put my numbers up on screen because it would make me look like a complete rank amateur, which, in all honesty, is pretty much describes me perfectly. Anyway, this is ready. So we need to get from here into here the only reason for that is I'm gonna can a lot of that so it'd be easier to take it from this bright tank to the canning well I might put that here I don't know yet it's got plenty of time to work that out because it's the lager's gonna be in here for I don't know a good couple of weeks I'd have thought even though that is um, Nova lager yeast um, which is supposedly, you know, you don't need to lager it for quite as long, but I'm going to anyway. So get it from there 
to here. Now, as you will remember from the last videos, uh, I had several ideas on how that might possibly be achieved, none of which really were that good ideas. So what I have decided did, I've got, oh, I'll, get them, I'll get them in a bit, I've got a ball lock to tri-clamp liquid here and then I will put on the racking port those who are members of the channel might have seen the outtake where I did a, a rather disastrous yeast harvest as I say that I don't know if I've set the memberships up yet I might do that um, yeah so anyway I'm going to put another ball lock on this here there won't be enough pressure to send it through there and then into here especially when there's you know filling it up there's the pressure in there so that's a bit of a worry I'm gonna to to need to keep an eye on that what I'm gonna use is just come around here I'm gonna have quite a few um, quite a few tanks that I'm not using I have to think about what I'm gonna do with that uh, I'm gonna use a flow jet um, first time for everything I suppose basically it is a pump which is gas operated or well, gas or air operated so co2 or air compressed air in here this is the exhaust so gas goes in there comes out here so I suppose co2 in an unvented environment wouldn't be a good thing and then you've got your beer in and your beer out I don't know if you can see those arrows there uh, but just for the avoidance of doubt, I have put stickers on there because, you know, I'm a bit of an idiot sometimes. Need things written down. Just out of interest, that's a uh, labelling machine. I'll just show you on here. Product out. Product out. Oh, well, thanks for that. That's really helpful. This is the, this is the flow jet. Um operating manual so got two product outs I suppose people who do this for a living will know but even so you know for a product manual it's a bit shit isn't it compressed air now I've got this little compressor but I don't think there's an easy way of regulating the output and it's not filtered I, I suppose it doesn't necessarily need to be filtered the, uh, the destruction manual says it needs to be filtered. I've got another little compressor. Well, I've got two more compressors. I've got a big beast over there and I've got the little stand-up one uh, in the container. So, standard thing. Now, I was wondering how we get compressed air out of here into here. So then I thought, well, this is the thing that plugs in there. And I've got one of these ball lock that I was going to use for the um, CO2 uh, carb stone in the bright tank I'll just bring you up to speed I've changed my mind on that obviously and um, I've gone for John Guest so CO2 to carbonate the lager will go straight in there so I need a way of connecting this to this and would you believe it it is the same thread so a bit of PTFE tape around there is that good I don't think it's always worked that well so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this out with beer line cleaner first uh, and then I'm going to run loads of water through it then I'm going to run some paracetic acid through it um, I've got another brew coming up in a day or two so I think I might clean this one or this out with paracetic acid now I'm going for a New England IPA so the start of that I don't really want it to be under pressure so if I do use this one, I'll come out of here 
and then I will just release that and then just have a blow off tube going down into a into a bottle of star sand and then when I'm ready for pressure fermenting close that off and uh, it will go through the spunding valve so what I might do is put on that racking port down there is um, yeah, a liquid ball lock to um, tri-clamp fitting and just dry run taking paracetic out of here or there wherever I've got it out of there through the flow jet into here and see if we can get it not totally full but reasonably full I suppose I ought to stop chatting and do it in it Sorry about that. It's not the quietest of uh, compressors, <laughs> but once it's full, uh, it shouldn't need to kick in very much to power that little flow jet. <sighs> Gas out. I've put it through a little valve here, uh, then goes into the flow jet. And then this is the beer line out. I think this works on demand, so uh, da, da, da. where did I put it? This will go on the delivery end so that I can isolate it. So this is what it sounds like. Turn that on. I suppose what we need to do now is hook up some fluid, some liquid it did, and um, and test the transfer. We're ready to test it. So we're coming out of my line cleaner bottle. It's only got water in it at the moment. Uh, and then we're coming round here into the in part of the flow jet and then the out part of the flow jet. At the moment it's just tucked there. What I'll do, I think I'll move them. Give myself a little bit more room to work. I'll turn the gas on and I think I'll just put on the end of here. Have we got enough room here? Maybe stretch that out a bit more. Um, turn the gas on, turn that on. Just have that going into the sink. Right, I suppose I have to get the other camera, shouldn't I? We should have magic active tracking enabled, uh, but it won't show you. It might do if I scooch down. Hello. We have coming out of beer line cleaner into, I've showed you this before. I'm going to turn the gas on or the compressed air. That then comes out of here and this isn't turned on at the moment. So I'm going to pop just a ball lock on the end. If I face this way, is that going to be better? And then turn it on. I don't know if this is capturing me doing this. Well, Well, it works after a fashion. 
The question is, if I turn the pressure here up, will it work any better? See, I don't really want it doing that spurting action. Um, <laughs> what can I say? Because uh, we'll just end up with a tank full of foam. Yeah. I've been thinking about this. And um, it's not a system that I'm going to use. It would take sort of forever um, and I don't know I mean, it's, it's, the idea is good enough but I spoke to Chris Harry Brew 69 uh, for those of you who don't know who I mean by Chris and he said oh no they're not really as um, hygienic as people think so I thought fuck it so I've got this Riptide Blickman Riptide which is um, fully dismantleable all the fittings, the tri clamp. So I'm going to soak everything in uh, Persid, uh, reassemble it, find a way to get all the air out. It has got on here um, a way to bleed the air out. Um, so my worry, obviously, is around cavitation in the pump, little bits of air in there. So we'll see is the answer we will see um i'm not going to do it now because it's far too late i've had other things crop up today so first thing tomorrow morning uh i will be putting that back together and then moving 150 liters of persid five from here to there and then back again and then uh i will Put all this away somewhere and then take all what is in here into there and then set that carving <sighs> long old job this isn't it here's what i'm worried about any form of oxygen trapped in here coming into contact with the beer Hey, I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Now this is the, we call this impeller, I suppose. And it's got these oils in it. And that then sits in here. And my guess is that the, um, the liquid then goes in there to help uh, lubricate it. <laughs> well, you know, and that goes in there. And um, and then the magnet spins it. So any air trapped in there could then become in contact with a beer. So I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure. Then my thoughts turned towards this. We've all got these. We've all got loads of these, haven't we? So I think I might take this apart. I do it every now and then. I'll, I'll whip one of these apart because you still get, even though they're not designed to be easily taken apart like this tri-clamp riptide um, it's worth giving them a good clean inside every now and then so let's see what this one looks like inside it looks like this has been cleaned relatively recently but it's still a bit gammy there I don't know if you can see that underneath that o-ring all possible causes of contamination but looks like there are less potential areas of cavitation yeah i think i'm tempted you know i'm always tempted i'm tempted you know 
to give this a good soaking because it is yeah, it does have a little bit of residual yuck on it so I think we'll give this a good clean and I think we'll go with this one rather than the uh, rather than the riptide I would say what do you think leave your thoughts in the uh, comments but it'll be too late oh where are we at okay filled this with 150 liters and then added 275 300 I can't remember 375 something like whatever per Sid. so uh, now um, I'm transferring that through this pump where hopefully we won't get much cavitation into here I'll explain this when we come to it and then into here um, so at the moment it's just checking whether or not it's got enough uh, welly to pump into here what I'm going to do is release at the top I'm going to put a ball rock on there and then just allow that to vent off if there is any liquid going in so it doesn't have too much top pressure on it in it all right so let's see where we go so we've topped the 100 litre mark which is good uh, when it's filled I'm then going to take off here through the bigger pump over there and run the spray ball just to make sure we've got everything inside and then I'm going to run it back into that fermenter that will leave this spotlessly clean then I'm going to purge this entire pipe with CO2 which is what this is for uh, and then I'm going to transfer from our <laughs> our lager into here exciting times the purpose of this in case anyone's thinks I've just gone completely bonkers which isn't necessarily far from the case um, is to try and manage as much as possible a completely oxygen free transfer now it's not quite as sensitive with a lager but it's very sensitive with something like a New England IPA that is why, as I haven't any means of testing for dissolved oxygen, DO, I'm just going to have to be very, very careful with the transfers and make sure that there's only CO2 in here as I'm filling. But that shouldn't be too difficult because as I send this back, I'm going to put a little top pressure on there and I'm going to leave this spray ball open uh, sorry not, not I'm not going to leave the spray ball open otherwise there wouldn't be any top pressure I'm going to leave this um, spray ball capped off with the where is it <sighs> do, 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 do. I don't know I don't know I ain't know nothing I'm from Barcelona. You can't do that now, can you? Not allowed to do 40 towers. Oh, fuck it. I don't know where I've put it. This is now full to the brim. In fact, more fuller than uh, the brim because it's started to drip out of here, so I've turned that off. And I've turned the pump off. Um, yeah, what I meant was capping that off like that. Didn't make that very clear, did I? Um, so there's a spray ball coming down into here what I'm going to do is send some of this back to drop it down to about here and then run the spray ball. although you know the spray ball there will be little air pockets in here I guess but I want to run the spray ball a little bit anyway so we have I guess 145 maybe near 150 Let's see how much is left in the fermenter. Not much. 
so that's always worth knowing. Good. And we're now transferring back. Good. So this is making sure that pump as clean as it gets. All the hoses as clean as they get. Now I did think about using these, but they're still quite new. So I need to give them a little bit more of a caustic clean and then um, da -da -da -da, persid. But this one has had a caustic clean. So that's good to use, even though it's a bit dusty on the outside. It's clean on the inside. Now I'm going to let it drop down to probably about 100 litres and then just run through the spray ball um, that I've capped off, which is what I meant to say earlier. Now purging this with CO2. Ideally I could do with another person at this end, but I haven't got another person at this end. So what I'm gonna do is um, cut off the CO2, allow a little bit to come out as I attach it to the takeoff. Whoops, to the takeoff on here. Or Oh, I don't know. It's probably a bit too high pressure. So, um, oh. so this is why I like the. Um, that's better. The knob because I can do it easier. So there we are, we've got a little bit of CO2 coming through here. CO2 will now be blowing up hopefully into there a little bit. I'll turn the CO2 off now. Let's just stick a bit more in there. And then I'm going to open this out here as it fills. God. I suppose there has to be a moment of truth at some point, didn't there? So that can be turned off. Uh, so we've got that coming out of there, into the pump, out of the pump, into here, there, boom, into there. How's this looking up here? Oh. We'll vent that off. Oops, phone nearly fell out of its case. That wouldn't have been good. Would have made this a very expensive brew. Is that still? Oh gosh, that's definitely only CO2. Right, I suppose I could just leave that. I'll just leave that venting. So that's open, this is open. I'm gonna turn the pump on and then open that or really should I just take a sample oh I don't think so no oh it's too late now isn't it no let's do it turn the pump on that's on that's open. That's open. <laughs> right. 
Right, it looked like there was some yeast came out first. So I'll have to remember just to dump from here. But we have a transfer. We have a lagery transfer. We have a slow transfer. Transfer complete. 90 is about what I was expecting because I have this batch we did. Uh, 20 for a sour and 20 for the blackberry um, lager. So uh, from about 150, it originally done to 140, about 90 is roughly what I was expecting. So, yes, well, I think now we start the clean down. So I'm going to take all this off, take the lid off and have a look after I've cleaned all these bits. I've earned this today. Well, it worked and uh, that was um, that was last week, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at getting all these videos together in a timely order. Um, that's now almost ready for canning. There's another video I'll put up about ruining order secondary CO2 regulators that'll be next we've got I didn't do a video of this brew day because I was just getting used to all this really I just wanted to focus on getting my act together properly with especially with the new HLT that's worked out perfectly it's brilliant it gives me the space that I need to, to sort of like not worry too much about running out of hot liquor and this in here this New England IPA I used the new yeast, WHC um, Pineapple Passion. It went off like a nuclear fucking bomb, seriously. Uh, so within 24 hours, it was just, I'll put, if I remember, I'll put a little clip in of how it was. So anyway, look, I think it works. Uh, I will tell when that is, um, I need to dry hop it and then cold crush it. Uh, I'm gonna dry hop it probably tomorrow while it's near the end of fermentation. So I'll get a bit of biotransformation. And then that will be going in here. Uh, and that will be the, that will be the litmus test um, to see really whether I have got a good oxygen free transfer. If not, it's going to be very, very expensive to find out. But, you know, this is all play. And as you scale it up, the costs and losses are commensurate to that scale. So good. I hope you enjoyed this complete twaddle. Um, a bit of a longer one, sorry. Uh, if you like this, this sort of thing and you haven't already done so, it would be absolutely lovely. If you were to subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up. Uh, feel free to leave a comment, and uh, and you know, um, yeah, tell your friends all that. I don't know. I'm not very good at all this, am I? Oh, click the bell, and it tells you when I post more of this rubbish. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. One day, I'll be less amateur, maybe. Till next time, you take care. Cheers. Right, it's lunch time. Pizza time. Nice hot pizza oven and uh, a meaty feasty, including black and white pudding. Whoa. And that, dear friends. 90 seconds later 
at 550 degrees is my lunch. Oh ho ho! A bit more. Make it make it go a bit further. There you have it. Cheers.